Uh, Daryl, first of all, um, just wanted to ask a bit about you, really. Dust settled on that Saturday, Tuesday schedule. Now you're at the other side. What have you made of it all? What have you taken from it? Uh, listen, I, I don't go into this Saturday, Tuesday. I just go on to the last performance at, at Colchester. We, we analysed that, the good bits, the bad bits. And then we, uh, we, we mainly been the focus, obviously, this week is Crawley away, so... Been nice to have a free week. It's been nice to get a bit of recovery in the lads that have played a lot of games in that block. Uh, and obviously, uh, we had the game Monday, which was important for, for players to get minutes under their belts as well, which was a positive. So uh, hopefully it puts us in good order. Um, I just wanted to, to talk about, I know not the to labour on the schedule, but how, how does that compare in, in what you've had to do in, in other difficult parts of your career to guide the team through that and to get them out the other side of it and, and look a lot safer in the league now as well? You, you adapt, Phil. You adapt. And I think you get that with the experience of, of managing games, to be honest with you. Uh, obviously, this season has been very, very difficult with, with COVID, no spectators. Loads of blocks of games in, in in you know a season crammed together, so you have to adapt as a manager there. Obviously, then then you move football club, and then you've got to adapt with loads of games coming through, and probably not getting the training minutes that you actually would like. So uh, yeah, adapt's probably the key word to doing it, and and, and taking each 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 problem and looking for a solution as you as you go along. I, I... Don't say it puts a strain on you, but does it does it affect you in any way when you're away from the club, when you're at home, when you're trying to work it all out? Does it get anyway, to you a little bit? I'm an intense person. I don't switch off. I don't switch off. I don't switch off. My rest is at the. Uh, I get a couple of weeks at the end of the season. That, that, that don't change for me. And, and straight away on the Sunday morning, I'm watching our game back, uh, the clipping it, looking at it in the mindset. What well, I've got to do a bit of man and man man managing on the Monday. And then Monday, obviously, we we got the game. You just, it's non stop, but I love it. It's not me complaining, by the way. I love my job, but it's just, you know, the rest comes for me at the end of the season when, when the, the job's been finished. And, and in terms of that job, I know you've been keen to give the players credit. Who's given you credit for what you've done? I don't want credit. I don't want credit. Uh, listen, I don't deserve credit, if, if, I, if I'm honest with you. We, you know, at the end of the day, the, the credit I deserve is if we can keep us into, into League Two and, and moving in the right direction in these next nine games. That's that's where I stand on it. Uh, still a big job to be done here. It's a big job to be done short term. It's a big job to be done long term. So, you know, I always, I've said this all along, Phil, at the end of the day, a manager should be judged when he goes out the door of, of what he's done in the football club. It's, it's a crazy world, his football management at the minute. Uh, you know, you lose a few games and, the, and fans want you out, social media... This, this, it's as worse as it's ever been, to be honest with you. The, the, the way the game is now and the pressures that are on on managers. So, uh, yeah, just crack on, really. Uh, in terms of the club in general, though, how have you found the people, the community it's based in? How have you adapted to that? I can't, can't speak highly enough, to be honest with you. Speaking to one or two fans, like I said before, on the training ground, the owners, the, the just real, real good people, real good people that you want to do really, really well for. That's what I feel. You know, you, you, I'm desperate to try and bring success to the football club because that's the sort of people you're working for and the support that the, the fan base uh, as well with the, the few fans I've actually spoke to as well, the passion, the drive. And uh, yeah, no, you want to do well here. And just one last thing from me. How far do you think Port Vale can actually go under what you are, are putting in place at the moment? We can win Saturday's game, Phil. You, you, you get the boring old answers from me on that sort of things. Listen, you know, you, you jump on that. You want your headlines, don't you? You know, I've heard managers say ridiculous things like they want Europe in five years. Yeah, you ain't going to be in a job five years. Let's just go and win <laughs> the next football match. You know, and then you can keep winning more of those as you go along the way. You'll be successful. Fair enough, Daryl. Thank you very Cheers, much. Phil. That's it for me. Cheers, Tar, thank you. Tar. Morning, Daryl. Hello, Morning. Mike. How are you doing? Good, uh, Daryl. I'm fine, thanks. Daryl, can you tell me, what did you get out of Monday's reserve game? Just, just, just tell me about that, the pluses. The match minutes. Uh, Burgi did a job at right back, did all right, didn't he? Looking outside the box with the injuries we've had in that position. Uh, Pope has got some minutes, some fitness under his belt and obviously trying to build a bit of confidence in there. Cools has got some fitness. Taylor, Whitehead, you know, Muzza. There was a, there's a lot of positives within the game. We've got it on the main pitch as well. So it was it was it was pleasing. Uh, the attitude of the lads was spot on as well, which is which is a which is a must. 
but in some reserve games it can be a little bit sloppy. But no, they was all keen to impress. So I've got quite a bit out of the game, to be fair, Mike. In terms of Popey, how, how close is he to being available to play in the first team? Oh, he's a piece of string, Mike. Yeah. Listen, Popey's, Popey's a Port Vale legend. I get that. We're working hard on his fitness level. Also, you know, it's a bad injury that. And, you know, Tom Pope's game is holding centre-halves off, you know, building confidence into the shoulder, into the arm. So, when I think he's ready, uh, he'll be travelling with us Saturday. So, we'll see whether he's ready then. But he's, he's, he's getting the training minutes now. He's getting that contact work now. And we'll see how we go along the, the next week or two. OK. And can you tell us the situation with David Fitzpatrick? Who's, I don't think he's, re- he's ready yet. Just what's yeah, his injury? Yeah, had a slight setback, to be fair to him. But he's, he's back on the grass today, but not that... You know, sometimes when you say to fans he's back on the grass, everybody thinks he's back training, but he's doing back on the grass doing light work. Uh, so uh, hopefully not too too long for fit. Yeah. I assume Colin Garlick was saying that since you've come in, you, you've involved one or two academy players in training. Just thinking how, how important is, is that to you? And again, yeah, one they had a good run out in the reserve games as well. Quite a few of the boys. I want to get that closer. They, they, you know, they've done 15, 20 minutes with my first team today. I'm working on a bit of shape for what we're doing for, for Crawley. So... You have to unite the club. They have to. They have to have that feel that they're they're involved in a football club. Which, uh, by all accounts, I don't know because I don't know previously what happened. By all accounts, I think that's changed a little bit since I've been in the building. It's it's the way I like to do things. You know, these, these are our young boys. We want to give them good habits and get them into good habits, and hopefully, we can bring one or two through to the first team through the, through the course of the next few years. I'm just thinking about recruitment in the summer. One, one thing I think you mentioned in the past is you like to play with two strikers and it's something you've done a lot since coming in. Is, is that something you're thinking of in terms of in the summer? Oh, Mike, you want to know everything, you might this morning. <laughs> you know, listen, I'm looking at everything, Mike. You know, I, like, I do like two centre-forwards on the pitch a lot of the times, yes. There's, there's no denying that. Uh, but, you know, and you recruit, and I'll be recruiting for that. But also... You, re- you recruit to be adaptable as well. Like I said before, I'm not a manager that recruits for one system. I recruit for adaptable systems. You're open, you get that system, which I've had previously in the past where it's very, very successful and all the teams worry about you. You know, I'm open to build that at Port Vale so that the other teams are worrying about us and not the other way around in the majority of the games. So, and uh, But if not, you have to have answers within the squad because sometimes players have runs of bad form you know, injuries. So the adaptability in the squad's key for me. And certainly we probably won't be, well, we won't be carrying as big a squad as we, we did this year into next year as well. That, that I'll tell you, that's a fact because there's too many bodies, in my opinion, too many seniors and not really a pathway for one or two of the younger players. So, yeah, we, we have to get that balance of the, the recruitment spot on. That's great for me. Thanks, Daryl. Cheers, Mike. Darrell, obviously, you've already said 24-7, your concentration on the job, on the job, and that's what it's all about. But do you get distracted? Do you look at the league table in terms of when you see where your team is and what I'm you might... I'm a screensaver, George. <laughs> it's, you know, anybody, anybody's lying. If you tell me different, you know, I, I want to make sure that we're secure. We've got a lot of work to do, but I want to make sure that we're looking at our own, our own business. You know, obviously, I know where the table, where we are, the results from the other night. I ain't doing my job right if I don't know all of that. I like to know who's been playing in other teams, what injuries they've picked up. I, like, I try and get as much information out of the league as possible, not just this league. So, yeah, as regarding the tables concerned, I know where we're at and I know that we, we need to get winning football matches. It's important you look at that bigger picture than you are because you leave nothing, it's no stone unturned in that way. And uh, that's an admiration that most people would have because it obviously is, as I said, 24-7 job for you, Daryl, isn't it? It is my livelihood. I don't, I've had the scars, George. I've had the scars of, of uh, dropping a team out in, in, into, the, into the National League. And, and it still scars me now. Even though we bounce back, we're back to back, but it still scars me. I'm a proud man. I want to. I want to do well. I want to win. I want to do well for the football club, and I want to make sure we're in League Two next year and building for the future. But until that's done, I won't be sleeping at night. I'll be working away, chipping away to make sure that the the players are ready for that for that for them fights, for them wars in the, in those games. And if we can continue the the form in in the last couple of games, we'll be more than all right. Obviously. And you're forward thinking, you've already started to put the building blocks in, in various areas, not only the recruitment, Nathan Rooney's come in, of course, they're all all the movements, Richard Duffy, and talks about, you know, the new training ground. So you're already putting that in place with a 
before you even get there in many ways. Yeah, I mean, to, to be fair to that, that's the, you know, more of the academy side of things that we need to be not making sure that we keep an eye on. You know, Carol's very, very keen on that we we try and produce and best way of producing one or two of our own players, which he's absolutely spot on about. So Nathan comes in there as head of coaching to, to work on the coaches in there, the younger coaches. Uh, so, and, and Duffy's obviously ex-player as well so uh, we've got to we've got to improve all areas of the football club you can't stand still in this game other clubs are moving forward that's the that's the nature of the beast we we have to get with the times if you want to be successful not not just in the short term but also in the long term cracking it then cracking it Saturday against Crawley in more ways than nice. one yeah no it'd be nice yeah, John's done a fantastic job down there with Lee Bradbury so it'd be, it'd be a tough task I've, I've liked Crawley this season you know beat Leeds in the FA Cup could Good cup run, good players, got some good good players in that team. There's a few that I've worked with, Sam Matthews, Tony Craig, Tom Nichols. So it's a team I know plenty about. So but looking forward to that test. 